Hi. I just wanted to do a quick video showing you a common failure mode of these EcoSmart LED light bulbs. One thing LED light bulbs promise besides the obvious energy saving is their longevity. In theory, they should last much, much longer than your typical incandescent bulbs. Although in theory this is true, in practice though, this has not always been the case. To be fair, the build quality and circuit design in general for these LED light bulbs have improved quite significantly over the last decade. For instance, the batch of these uh, 65 watts Cree LEDs that I purchased three years ago had all failed within the first 18 months, every one of them, without exception. And the failure mode for all of them were pretty much the same, namely the overheating of the switching power supply circuitry here. And uh, the switching power supply circuitry is tucked behind this aluminum heat sink on the other side. So as you can see, it is quite uh, compact and uh, this is certainly not sufficient for the heat dissipation. So the most likely failure is due to the mains filter cap inside either bulged or dried up under these high operating temperatures. But the LED themselves are actually all functional. And in fact, I had saved all of these uh, LEDs. I cut them out and uh, thought that one day I might be able to use them. And uh, notice that these are actually not individual LEDs. These are chip LEDs. And in this case, each one of these has a forward voltage about uh, 35 volts. Anyway, I replaced all of those Cree bulbs with these equal smart ones. Um, I have to say they seem to be relatively reliable, although these two have failed one after another just uh, two years in, uh, in the last couple of days. And uh, one is a 65 watts version, the other one is a 75 watt version. But if you look at the product box, you will see that uh, these were supposed to at least advertised to be able to last for 22 years. And also they have a warranty of uh, five years. So I assume that if I take these into Home Depot, of course, I can replace them. But of course, I'm more interested in open them up and see what exactly are the failure modes here. And I had just uh, popped off the dome. Uh, these are both plastic from these two light bulbs so that you can see the circuit here. And uh, here you can see that both of these boards are based on pretty much the same design by the look of it. They both have a eight pin IC on board. Now, I couldn't find any information on the specific IC used here, but uh, similar designs you can find a lot on the internet. Now, just take a look at the, this one right now. Is uh, You will see that there's actually not too much to it. And on the reverse side, there is a cap. And interestingly, especially on this uh, 65 watt version, you can see that the cap is actually not soldered on. So presumably this is for increasing the reliability. These are actually crimped on. You can see this angle. And, uh, but of course on this 65 watt version, this capacitor is soldered onto the board directly. Now, this design actually is quite clever as uh, this heat sink uh, this piece of aluminum sitting here is served as a heat sink and the heat is dissipated on this uh, aluminum casing. So without transferring to the capacitor, that increases the lifespan of that capacitor here. Given how few components are on this board, I don't think there's a lot actually can go wrong. I did just measure the capacitance of this capacitor and the ones on this board, and uh, they are both in line with the uh, stated value and also the series resistance look just fine. So I suspect that something might be wrong with one of the LEDs, as these LEDs are in series. So if any of these are bad, then the entire board would not be working. And now I have hooked up a constant current source with the multimeter measuring the voltage drop as I am curious to see as to how many LEDs are there on each of the chip here. And right now the current setting is at roughly 10 milliamps, which is plenty to light these up. And the compliance voltage right now is set at 30 volts, which should be plenty as we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these in series. Each of those voltage drop would be far lower than 30 volts. So let's give it a go. And let's see the first one. 
Yep, good one. Second one's good. Third one, good. Fourth one, good. So let me just switch this too. Good. And as you can see, this one is not working. So this one clearly is what caused the entire LED to fail, the entire bulb to fail. And this one, let's just see. Yeah, it's working. And the last one, that's working. As you saw that from our probing, everything is working except for that one LED. So clearly that's what caused the entire circuit to fail. Uh, now I di didn't quite uh, see what the voltage drop is. Let's take another look here. So it's a 15 volts. So by the look of 15.8. So by the look of it, it appears that there are four LEDs in series inside each of these chip. Now let's take a look at the uh, 75 watt version to see if we can observe similar pattern here. And for this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 LEDs in series. So presumably each one of these would uh, have lower voltage drop as uh, uh, I don't see why the overall voltage would be different, but let's take a quick look here. So the first one, uh, maybe the polarity. Let's try this. Yeah. So let's take a look. And we're at the 7.87. So yeah. So clearly the voltage drop is uh, much lower than the other one. So probably there are only two of these uh, LEDs in each of the chip. And uh, let's uh, let's uh, keep measuring here. Yep, working. No problem. And uh, this one seems to be not working. Yeah, so let's uh, continue here. No problem, no problem. And And as you see that after we cycle through all the LEDs, only one of them is actually not working. So again, the failure mode is very similar to that of the 60 watt LED that we just tested. It's also one of the LEDs that had failed. Although we don't know exactly what caused those LEDs to fail, I suspect it still might be temperature related. And unfortunately, because all these LEDs are in series, which means if one of the LED fails, the entire system would fail. For those who are familiar with the system reliability, we know that in a system like this, when everything's in series, and if suppose each component is totally independent, the total reliability really is the product of the reliability of each of the single component here. So in this case, for example, if we have a reliability, let's say for a single LED is 99.9%, .9%, if you have 10 of these together, you roughly get 99% overall reliability. So as the saying goes, a chain is no stronger than its weakest link. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and I will catch up with you next time.